I uh, call the uh, July 5th, 2017 Board of Selectmen meeting for the Town of Wolfboro to order. Uh, Mr. Owen, do we have a need for non-public tonight? Uh, yes, there's a couple of matters of litigation to discuss. Okay. We have uh, the minutes from uh, June 21st, 2017, a regular meeting. I have one very small change, is there, and it's on page four after all those pages of uh, the thing on the bond. And it is the second motion, the third sentence, that all, and it should, uh, all Wolfram, the next word should be farmers. Okay. That's my only change. Any other changes from the board? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to accept the minutes as amended. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain because I wasn't here. I'm abstention. Okay, tonight we have, uh, we have two public hearings. The uh, first public hearing is for a temporary outdoor event permit. Wolfboro Public Library Board of Trustees to hold an ice cream social on July 29, 2017 from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. at the Wolfboro Public Library. Do we have someone here to speak to that? My name is Jane Newcomb. And I serve on the Library Board of Trustees as an alternate trustee. I'm here to um, tell you about our ice cream social which will be held on July 29th in conjunction with the library open house. The open house is scheduled from 9.30 until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, the open house is encouraging people to come and see uh, all parts of the library, as well as hear two um, presentations by an architect. Our part is to have the ice cream social on the front lawn <clears throat> and hoping to entice even more people to come to the open house, but also to show the town of Wolfboro how much we appreciate their support. Any questions? Uh, I'll open the uh, public hearing. Does the uh, audience have any uh, questions? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, board members, questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I only have one. I don't know about anybody else, but my approval from the department heads, I have no signatures. Mr. Owen, did that go through and get approved by the department? I think it did. That was, uh, Ann was out last week, so we probably just didn't get it in your agenda packets. So you don't know whether there's no issue? I, I don't believe there is. Okay, that's the only question I have. Your husband knows. I'd entertain a uh, motion then to approve the, the issuance of a temporary outdoor event permit to the Wolfboro Public Library Board of Trustees to hold an ice cream social on July 29, 2017 from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. at the Wolfboro Public Library. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much.
The uh, next public hearing is the Kingswood Youth Center to hold a chili cooking contest on September 30th, 2017 from 11.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. set up at 9 a.m. at Durgan Stables. Is there someone? Perfect. <laughs> Hi, I'm Pam Sweeney, the Executive Director of the Youth Center. This is our eighth chili challenge. Um, everything is the same as it always was. Um, we have about eight to 10 people cooking chili and probably about 75 to 100 people coming through. Are there any questions? I'll open the public hearing. Does any members of the public have any questions, comments? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Board members? I have still, I have the same question with this one. Mr. Owen, do you know whether uh, there are any issues with this in terms of? I don't believe so. Okay, then I'm fine. Okay, I'll make the uh, motion to approve the issuance of a temporary outdoor event permit to the Kingswood Youth Center to hold a chili cooking contest on September 30th, 2017 from 11.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., 9 a.m. set up at Durgan Stables. Second that. Motion has been made and seconded. Any other discussion from the board? Uh, Lou. <coughs> I will be glad to volunteer to judge again. Great. We will, we will need you, David. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's yeah. right. Big sacrifice. <laughs> Big sacrifice. We'll, we'll be in touch. Okay. Thank you. All those in uh, favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Next, we have the uh, acceptance of personal property with a value of $5,000 or more. It's the acceptance of a Gator vehicle with a value of $14,000 from the Cotton Valley Trail Committee for maintenance of the rail trail. Good evening. I'm Denise Roy Palmer. I'm the Executive Director of WEDCO, the Wentworth Economic Development Corporation. We've been acting as the fiscal agent of the Cotton Valley Trail Committee for a couple of decades, almost. Mm -hmm. And uh, currently, the uh, last section, 1.7 miles of trail, is currently under construction, and the, that leads to the last phase, and the 12 and a half miles of trail are done. And Paul can talk about some of the inaccessibility to the trail and some of the maintenance, ongoing maintenance, will be done to get with the trail. The access has always been difficult because it's far from many of the roads in the old sections, but now it's become really acute. We have this 1.7 miles between the roads, the houses, no access between Cotton Valley and Clark Road and Brookfield. And if we're going to get out there to do any maintenance of any kind, we have to have a vehicle to transport us, uh, trans <coughs> people and materials both. And uh, so uh, Jim Nuff has done the research and uh, come up with a, a gator that fits between the rails and uh, it'll fit our needs. And uh, so that's, we're asking the town to accept a gift that we will, we will, we will buy it and give it to you. Okay. I'll uh, open the public hearing to the members of the public. Is there any members of the public that wish to comment or have questions? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Board? No, I'm, would you like me to make a motion? I would love it. I move to accept the donation of a Gator value, value with a Gator vehicle with a value of fourteen thousand dollars from Wedco and the Cotton Valley Rail Trail Committee, with the understanding the cost to ensure this vehicle will be paid by the donor organization. Second that. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion from the board? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. Next, we have the bulk vote, which includes uh, weekly manifests. Yes. yes, Mr. Chairman, I had uh, an additional bulk vote item I sent out today, if that was agreeable to the board. Yes. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Property tax abatements, refunds, notices of intent to cut lumber, timber, property tax credits and exemptions, raffle permits. And what's the what we what are we adding so people know? It's an application for reimbursement to cities and towns in which federal and state forest land is situated. Okay. I move that we accept the bulk vote with that item added. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Moving on to appointments, it looks we have uh, trustee of the trust funds. Mr. Owen. Uh, yes, the uh, 
Trustees, the trust funds had a uh, uh, resignation recently, um, which was previously reported to the Board of Selectmen, and they are uh, uh, requesting the appointment of one of their alternates, uh, Dennis O'Hearn, uh, to fill the remainder of the uh, term of the uh, person who resigned. Okay. Board members? I'll make a motion to appoint Dennis O'Hearn to the trustees of trust funds for a term to expire April 30th, 2019. I'll second that. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 We also have the uh, health officer and deputy health officer, health inspector, to be appointed. Mr. Rowan. Yes. Uh, these are for three-year terms. Uh, their appointments expire later this month. Uh, we've uh, inquired with both of the incumbents, and they're both willing to uh, accept uh, reappointment, which is uh, reflected by the fact that they signed the form. And uh, so I think we're ready to go. Okay. I'll make the motion to approve the reappointments of uh, Philip Rondeau as a town's health officer and Dave Senecal as the town's deputy health officer, health inspector for terms of three years. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? I abstain. <laughs> we have, under new business, we have a grant agreement with uh, New Hampshire DES for the Lake Wentworth Crescent Lake Watershed Management Plan Phase 3. And uh, I believe uh, Matthew is here to uh, talk to us about that. Yes, and I'm here purely as a substitute for Dave Ford at this point in the process. I just want to provide two quick okay. My understanding of this process is in the past is for the phase one and phase two 319 grants, uh, a conditional approval was sought from the board. Uh, in the event that the grant is awarded, the town would be allowed to sign and accept that grant. Um, this being the Phase 3, 319 grant, uh, this is focused on two specific sites or areas, uh, the first of which being roadside improvements along Route 109, uh, specifically in the area shown. Uh, you can see I, I distributed a picture of the Triggs Island parking area. There's a culvert area there that will uh, undergo some improvements or best management practice implementation. The second site is at Camp Bernadette, the other picture that I distributed. Uh, there are a couple things that will happen there, including some beach and driveway improvements uh, to decrease erosion and uh, do some uh, sedimentation control as well. Uh, the grant itself is for $50,000 with a $33,000, $350 match component, which is being provided from a few sources. The expected end date at this point that we haven't actually received a, a contract is 2019 based on our submission back in January of 2017. Obviously, again, as I mentioned before, this wouldn't be effective until governor and council are able to sign the grant. Uh, but really the intent of me being here tonight is to discuss potential acceptance in the future, so a conditional approval. Uh, there are four phases really to this. Um, design, permit, and construction being three phases, those are for both the Route 109 and the Camp Bernadette, and then the fourth phase being a, a pretty nice outreach and education component as well, which has been included in the other 319 grants that have been accepted by the town. Uh, with that, I can accept questions. I'll do my best to answer them with my limited experience with these grants, but I'm um, happy to try. Board? I have one, and you may not be able to answer this. Sure. Um, Dave Ford came and talked to us about the Jean, Jeans Beach mm -hmm. hedge area, and is that in phase two, and then this is phase three in addition to that? That's correct. So uh, the Jeans Beach, uh, and there are four components to the phase two project, which okay. is already under, underway and scheduled to be completed at the end of this year. Uh, there were the South Main Street improvements, which we're working on right now. Uh, the Trites construction, which you may mm -hmm. have seen the news about. Obviously, that was part two. That's complete. The Route 109 Jeans Beach improvement, which Dave presented on, and component four was the Wentworth State Park 
uh, improvements as well, which we have plans for those, and construction <coughs> is scheduled for fall. So those were the four components of phase two, two. Right. of this program. Okay, and what is the date in which these have to be completed? Is it December 2017? The phase two efforts? That's correct. Yes, yes. Okay, because I think there is some concern about whether we're moving On along. For those. Yeah, that's uh, before we get into something else, we want to make sure that Absolutely. we get the grants that we already have. Yeah, there's no question. Um, I think that phase two suffered from some changes in administration, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, Obviously, my predecessor was handling the administration of this grant, and when that change happened, Dave Ford was overloaded, I think, to an extent. Uh, however, my discussions with him indicate that these will be, uh, should be complete in the fall. Uh, really, I think the tightest of the projects of those four components is really the South Main Street improvements. Um, but on that, we really only have to get through the permitting phase and not the construction phase. So Dave anticipates being able to finish this up by the end of 2017, though I imagine it will be quite tight. Okay. Thank you. So we need to uh, make a motion here the, uh, to approve uh, accepting DES funds and to enter into a contract with the Department of Environmental Services and further to authorize the town manager to execute any documents which may be necessary for this contract. So that's my motion. I'll second that. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion from the board? My only comment is I think this is a great uh, uh, effort on the uh, town and the Wentworth Watershed Association to make some real changes in lake quality, and I totally support it. I would just add that they, they actually contacted me today asking if they were necessary for this meeting tonight, and I said I, I think you have plenty of support already from the board, so I, you can stay home for this one. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. We have a uh, application for a commercial vesting landing permit, Winnie V, operated by Winnipesaukee Adventures. Is there someone here to speak to that? Is that a prop? Hi, I'm Sharon. I am a Wolfboro resident, and um, I am a outdoor guide on Lake Winnipesaukee, and going to be doing guiding and outdoor camps. Um, and it's going. It's on the lake, Winnipesaukee, and in the mountains. And I have. Your, we will be hiking. They can't. They can't Sorry. hear you. Okay, we're going to be hiking. We're going to be biking, and um, boating on the lake in a 1964 Lyman Islander, classic antique boat. Um, the groups will be approximately eight to twelve people. And I am asking for usage of the landing in the town of Wolfboro. I have the insurance that was requested with the town of Wolfboro covered under it and also um, Is this different than the one we had already submitted. I thought there was one submitted. It was, but there was a yes. question yeah. over the not. not this the is first an one. updated one. Yeah. Is I that what you're saying? I think what she's passing them out must yes. be the updated one because we had one. notified okay. her that it wasn't uh, okay. quite to our usual uh, requirements. Um, Anne had called me and <coughs> wanted to get that insurance up, upgraded a bit. So. Um, mostly will be coming in on the weekends and um, utilizing um, some of the great features that Wolfboro has. So I'm going to work in conjunction with the Libby Museum and I'll be getting people over there. They have um, 
wildlife shows and other types of exhibits that work with the outdoors. Um, we're, I'm going to be also working with the local establishments in Wolfboro for, um, for food and we'll be going to the Loon Center and different areas around the lake utilizing the trails and the trail systems that we have. We'll be hiking the islands in Winnipesaukee, Rattlesnake, Stone Dam, um, Cow Island, Ragged, and also biking the scenic shores around Winnipesaukee. So um, it's body, mind, and spirit is what it is. So we're bringing people out on the lake and the Lake Winnipesaukee meaning is smile of the great spirit. And that's what we're trying to do is get people outdoors and on the lake. Leave your flag again. Leave your flag again. Oh yes. <laughs> yes, it is. And so we're, um, we will be having a camp every Wednesday that is for um, health and wellness to get people out so that they can work their bodies, work their mind. We have meditation and um, also work our spirits. Board members, here. I have a, quite a few. Uh, questions. One is on the application it says for the year 2016. Um, that must have been from last year. Well, um, it's, then it's not current. The other thing is your residence is 13 Bass Drive? Yes. Okay, that is not a year-round home. It's a summer cottage. Uh, to me that's, that's not your residence. From what I can see you actually live in Loudoun. The other issues I have with is on your sign, there's no phone number. And also on the marine insurance, and as well as this marine insurance binder, it has 13 Bass Drive, Guilford, New Hampshire. That's, that's not uh, the way I see it. Um, and on the boat registration, it says Bass Drive. Wolfboro. Okay. But I have some issues with the with the whole thing, uh, personally. Also, if you in the tax card it says that this was not a year-round residence and it's a camp. Um, so, you know, it's not a year-round residence at this time. So I find that kind of interesting. So to me, you're not giving us all the right information on any of these things. So I I, I would like. Personally, I think it should be reapplied for and all these things straightened out on the applications. Um, well, I'd like to clarify a couple of those questions and those the things that you brought up. Um, I do own the residence at 13 Boz. And I'm not saying you don't. Right, and it is uh, a, a cottage and I have lived there you know, during the summer. I'm in the process of renovating it into a year-round residence um, and I don't know if that makes a difference, whether you would give the landing or not, whether what my residence is. I don't know why it said Guilford. Um, it must have been a mistake. And well, it says on both of them. The one you just gave us and the one that was in our packets have the same information. I apologize. That must have been a mistake since 13 Boz is in Wolfboro. Um, and uh, I can. There's uh, just inadequacies in here, and I would like a whole new fresh application from my perspective with all the right information on it. I don't think that's unreasonable. And David, is there any way that we could, uh, without waiting for another board meeting, if she brings things up to your approval, we could, you know. Well, I just think it, it needs to come to the town. I mean, these addresses aren't correct. 
Oh, another Last word. drive Guilford, that's not correct. In other words, you want a, you want a public You can hearing. claim a residence here. She owns property. There's two people's names, John Hoagland and Sharon Wells on the tax card. Right. But, you know, I, I just think we need to have clarification on some of these does things. Does it make a difference when you get a landing whether I live in the, in the town of Wolfboro or not? I don't. I don't see that that makes a difference, but you're claiming your residence as that property. Well, because it will be my residence. Well, it's not now. So this is incorrect. You should put, my opinion is you should have what your address is currently. You don't live it currently except in the summer at last drive. Yes, but well, does it really make a difference where my address is in terms of operating a boat out of the landing. Well, if we have some issues, somebody's going to say, well, it's Sharon Wells and she lives at 13 Bass Drive in Guilford, New Hampshire. That's what it says. Well, I can get that updated. I could get you that information tomorrow. I'm sorry, that was not my mistake. It must have well, been the boat insurance, must have taken the wrong information. Sometimes they click it in and the wrong address might have come in. Um, and as far as the boat coverage, I've called them and gotten what was requested mm -hmm. by you, and I am. I can get that done tomorrow. Um, you know, whatever. Same, same with the year of the application on mine. I don't know about anybody else's, but it's the 2017 is crossed out, and it says 2016. I'm sorry. Um, what it says. I'd like to have it cleaned up. Well, I, I'm i sorry if there was a mistake on the application, sir. I can fix that. I can come over and scratch it out. Um, it's fine. I'm just bringing up points that I saw on this application. I appreciate that. We have a board here that will decide. Yes, what and I will, I will definitely fix those. They can those. make whatever motion they want. Linda? Yeah, let me get clarity on your coming in only on Saturdays. Yes, I will and be coming in And you're either going to come in, are you coming in at 9 and 12, or are you coming in at 9 and 3, or are you coming in at 12 and 3? I have 9 and 12 or 3. Well, I had asked Dan about that, and I will be coming in at 9 and then um, dropping off okay. at, at 12. But some days, if a if the group wants a full day, then it would be at three. Okay, are you, are you also asking us, other than just a landing, are you asking us to park? Are you gonna bring the boat in, drop the people off, and go off? Because that's what a landing permit is. I'm trying, I, I'm not a totally understanding exactly all the dimensions of what you're asking from us. I will be picking up the people. So you drop Wolf them off at nine. Am I correct? I will be picking them up at 9 from Wolfboro, from the landing. Okay. Leaving. Okay. Going to Rattlesnake Island and hiking the island, having a picnic, meditating, um, go, or going to uh, other areas and doing scenic bike rides, whether it be Meredith biking Meredith Center Road or, okay. and then I will be bringing them back at either noon or if it's a later day at three. Okay, so what you're really doing is making arrangements for people here only in Wolfboro because you're gonna pick them up Wolfboro or do you have other stops? Are you gonna pick them up from a group of stops or are all the people gonna come just from Wolfboro? Or are you just, gonna? Just from Wolfboro. Okay. And you had said you were making arrangements with the Libby, and then it sounded like for some of the time the people would be exploring Wolfboro. Did I misunderstand that? I may have. I'm going to be bringing some of them to the Libby to be able to be part of their exhibits. And Is I- that, Are you doing that by boat and dropping them off at the Libby also? Yes. So, so, for you, instance, I could you be... You need landing permit not only for the town dock, but you're going to need permit from us to land at the Libby Museum. If that is what um, I would need, yes. Um,
but you're not going to, and this, I may just have misunderstood you. I'm not trying to give you a hard time. At any point, are you going to bring, you're not going to at any time take a group here, leave them, and have them just wander around and explore Wolfboro for the day and then park that boat in Wolfboro. That's not going to happen. Am I correct? That could be a possibility. I like to bike them on the rail trail and... Um, okay. So you're asking for landing. You're also asking us to give you permission to keep your boat at the town dock for some period of time on some days. Am I correct? Yes. For anywhere is from 9 to 3. Yes. So you're looking for, for a boat slip. Approximately an hour. Right, right now there's only, there's only two places that commercial boats can land at the town docks, is what my knowledge is, is where the, is where the Mount Washington lands and the Wimpisaki Bell lands and where the Millie B lands. Mm -hmm. Those are the only two landing spots. And Mount Washington has precedence over everybody. If the Winnie Bell is, is there when the Mount Washington's coming in, the Mount Washington is not stopping. Uh, and that's why boats can really never be left unattended at those two locations. The Millie B has ex an exclusive use on that dock, mm -hmm. and they're only, they're only gone for short periods of time, and then they're back in and picking up another person. Uh, so I, my only, I think it's a great idea. I think if you clean up the application and also note that you'd be landing at the Libby Museum uh, dock, which is town property as well, uh, clean and, and add that into it, but I, I, don't, I can't, I don't think that parking at the town docks is going to be, is going to fly because other people would want to do that and we had never allowed that in the past as far as my knowledge. We also have a two hour limit on the docks, correct? Yeah. Four. No, four. four. I, I guess my other thing is, is are we going to lay, uh, what about the commercial landing at the Libby? And I would assume you're, are you just going to drop them off there or are you going to park at the Libby and then go in with them? Park at the Libby and go in with them. Okay, so um, then we don't allow, I don't believe we allow people to dock and park at the Libby dock. I don't know. Oh, well, let I, me look in, in the uh, thing here. Our ordinance, that's what's going to tell yes. you. Yes. <clears throat> I believe it's only downtown that that can happen. I also have a question. Mr. Owen, have you looked to see where there's a place on our um, railing there? Is there a place for another uh, sign? I didn't have time today to go down and do that. specifically this. check. I, I, I was down there recently looking at the signage, but I didn't really uh, look at it with the idea of seeing if there was enough room for another another sign. The where it would be to the left, I think, is... I think, well, there, I think that's something before we say she can have a sign. We need to take a look at what we, space we have down there between the Millie B and the um, Winnipesaukee Bell and the Mount Washington. They all have signs, and then underneath they have some kind of racks in which they put their cards. I don't know how much space there is left. I think that's something yes. that we as a board has to go down and measure because okay. that would dictate how big, if we yes. approve this, a sign would be. And I, I'd like to hold off on. We put the sign on another railing somewhere. I, mean, I don't believe there is. I did see down there through just investigating that there was a space available to put a sign on that would be a 20 by 40. You measured it? Um, well, I didn't bring a measuring tape down, okay. but I looked and it looked like, but, but that's what, uh, to me, that's what we need to do is right. to measure it and give you a location for your sign. So nobody gets upset. Yes. It's clear. I'd like, that'd be nice. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted to bring sort of a, a sample of the signage would be in a very rustic type of decor, like you know, the birch bark um, with very campy style on something rustic. Not, not this, but I'm just saying it would be a rustic sign, very simple, 
and tasteful. Um, and in terms of a comment to the the docks, which are which is not the landing area, if that is not acceptable via the ordinance, then I would ask if I could put another day in at the landing, not just oh, Saturday. Fine. Look nice. um, oh. and because then I can. Um, be able to have another day here. My, my plan was to be able to bring people out so that they could um, bike ride and hike the trails surrounding Winnipesaukee that are accessible by boat, which are the Sewell Woods and Abenaki and the rail trail. So those are places for people to be able to come and utilize. And I don't have any problem with that. The problem is your commercial vehicle, and we don't allow them to park at the town docks. I think it would be nice, but that's your only way to bring them in. If you brought them in other than by boat, and you rode all those places, there's no issue at all. It's just the issue with the boat and the dock, and we have specific rules about where commercial boats can land. I believe, and I believe that the only place that we allow them to land like barges because obviously I know that is at is at Libby Museum you can land there and land land and yeah that wouldn't and you can land and then leave and leave so. now That's what, at the Libby it's the same thing is you could land there drop them off and then you'd have to the boat has to go you, you we can't give you permission to land there it's okay. just the logistics of our, you know, right. I think it's great that you would take them up to the Libby Museum. I think that's perfect. Yeah. You know, I just, it, it doesn't fit in with our, our ordinance. And maybe she didn't know, because I had talked to her, and she said she would love for me to bring people there. And she said she's been trying to get the trolley and other, the Millie B, actually, to drop people off from Wolfboro to bring them over there. So she thought it was wonderful, because I'm going a little step further than the Millie B. Um, and they do wonderful, you know, boat rides on the lake. I'm just a whole, it's just a different, um, it's getting people moving their body and we're, it, it's going further. It's getting them on the islands and getting them to certain viewpoints, bringing them in the backwoods, wilderness. Um, and we live in this area, which is absolutely second to none and people don't even know about a lot of what we have here. And so that's what I'm trying to promote, health and wellness and the outdoors in New Hampshire and Wolfboro and Meredith and all the beauty that we have around this lake. And I'm willing to do whatever I need to do in terms of permits and I wanna make sure I'm doing it right. That's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, if you tell me I can't use the docks, um, then that if that's the ordinance, that's the ordinance. But if there's another way um, where I can use the landing, or I'm not sure how it works with Millie B, how they are there. Um, I know that they're part of the boat museum, but also um, I know that the dive Winnipesaukee has a boat and there's a mail boat. So I didn't know if there's also space there that could ever be utilized or that if I could is that owned by the town or? It's all owned by the town, all the docks. Mm -hmm. So oh. our rules regulate. Right. So I don't know if I could become like one of those people that have their boats there. Um, but at this point, I'm just really asking for Saturdays, um, and which would be picking up and leaving um, the custom with the customers that are staying in the hotels of Wolfboro. Um, I'm gonna hopefully try to bring people into Wolfboro to stay in hotels and groups and utilize the restaurants and I'll be utilizing the restaurant foods here. Um, so we're, I'm trying to work cooperatively with towns around the lake and Wolfboro to um, really better their, their travel and their tourism and offer more to the guests that come here. Um, and uh, I think Goodhue and Hawkins also would, would rent you a space. I mean, they, I, they, I know other people, they do that too. 
they wouldn't, and you could uh, you know, rent a come and going space and park your boat there for four hours. I mean, they rent by the month, but, uh, but they're very flexible. Do you know Good Hugh and Hawkins? Know them? Yes, I do. Um, they're, 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 they're on the same track that everybody else is to help Wolfboro. Yes. Um, trying to be able to get some, um, somewhere where people can go and get on and park and be able to um, have an easy transition to be able to walk out of the Wolfboro Inn or, or walk downtown and know that they can go and get on a boat like they can the Millie B, um, like they can the Mount Washington at the Weirs. Um, and I understand the Mount Washington, that's king. <laughs> um, I've been on it several times. They're, I'm doing the opposite of what you know they're doing. Um, this is something that is done in several places around the country. Um, on different lakes, um, and New Hampshire has been lacking in their, you know, offerings for people that come into the state, and the travel and tourism industry is wanting and needing um, wellness and adventures um, for people, you know, and that's where my background is that I've been doing programs around Lake Winnipesaukee for the last 12 years and um, helping people with with different ailments and um, and that's my goal is to make a healthier New Hampshire I, I think you know everything that you talked about is, is I think if you can get the I think if you can get the application cleaned up with your as Mr. Seneca asked for with your with your New Hampshire mailing address, that's your permanent mailing address. And if you can get the insurance certificate with the proper address, not laced in Guilford, uh, a phone number associated with the business, and the uh, there's also a couple. One million, two million. Is that on there? Look for, right. No, it doesn't. <coughs> yeah, could could I suggest the board uh, hold this over, Mr. Chairman, to your next meeting to give the applicant uh, time to revise her uh, application to indicate exactly what it is she wants to do, and also to get her insurance information um, uh, corrected. And also, it was just pointed out to me that we. Uh, we usually look for uh, 1,000 per, I'm one sorry, million. $1 million dollars of uh, liability insurance per incident or accident uh, and 2 million in the aggregate. And this is only for a million here. So we're, this, this still doesn't quite meet the, the town standard. Did they not put the aggregate on there? I don't see an aggregate here. It's just a, uh, one million, one million. For accident. <clears throat> and that's something you can easily deal with with the insurance company. And it, yep. uh, so yes. I think if you could get those things, Brad. Yeah, just one other thing I noticed here, too, is because you're looking to do this only on Saturdays, correct? Yes, out of okay. Wolfboro. Because you, you put in for 64 landings on a Saturday with, you know, figuring two, two landings to you know, per day, come, leaving at 9, coming back at 12 or 3. There's not a lot of Saturdays left in the summer here. I'm trying to figure out how you're going to get 64 landings in. There's only 25 left in the whole rest of the year here, getting us through uh, into the winter, too. So I think we probably really need to know a little more specifics on the times that you plan on coming in to the dock down there and stuff, you know, um, instead of kind of being vague at, you know, you got 12 or 3, which I understand your explanation. You might stay on all-day excursion. Um, but it just seems like those don't add up to the 64. Okay. All I will so double-check that. Double-check that part. Um, maybe it's because I had planned on starting earlier. Yep. Um, and I do plan on going to the end of the season. So 
into October. Yeah. Um, so, and I'll just take a look at those, the numbers there. I, I also see on this sign it said Sunset Cruises. Are you planning to do that out of Wolfboro or are you doing it that out of someplace else? I will be doing that out of someplace else. Okay. Um, but I did want to plan on putting some into Wolfboro. Um, and when I had talked to Ann, she just said to put on there, you know, what you're going to be doing now, you know, in the future. Well, then nope. you would be landing at, at after sunset some of the days. I think what would be helpful for us if you can really better lay out exactly, you know, what you're telling us tonight. I think that's what we're having the trouble with because we go from this and then try, you know, and then we see sunset cruise and you haven't talked about a sunset cruise. So I'm not, I, I'd like to know specifically. Yes, know. I understand. Okay? Yes, I I'm do. I'm sorry it's, it's so difficult, but. And it's, it's a tight spot, and you know you'll be parking where the you'd, you'd be landing where the where the where the, where the, where the uh, uh, Wolfboro Inn lands and where the uh, Mount Washington lands, and you know we need to have a schedule so that when Wolfboro PD is getting a call saying there's a boat parked and the Mount Washington's trying to come in, you know, it's one of those if we have a set schedule, then we know where people are when they're supposed to be there and when they're not. So. Okay. Okay. And the other thing that I'd like you to just make note of is that if these times don't work because there's another boat coming in at that time, I'm happy to change that time to 9:30 or 10 or you know I'm I'm flexible in terms. The only of one that really is the right. sticking one is the Mount Washington because if, like they said, they will not if if you're if you're in their spot, they will be on the radio and blowing the horn because they're not stopping. They're coming to park. At that spot. And we have to feel, we also should provide her with a Winnie Bell schedule. I think you, we need yes, to see if, that if, and, and then take a look at what times you can have because of the other two. I think the Mount Washington comes in at 11.15 and is out, so I didn't see 12 to give you trouble. But I'm not sure when the Winnie Bell goes in there. I don't know their schedule. Yes. Um, that would be wonderful if you could yeah. provide me with the schedules and then I can be more accurate. Um, the goal for this year is just to do weekends mm -hmm. and get that started. Saturday, when you say weekend. Saturday, <laughs> yes, here in Wolfboro on in Saturday. Okay. And using the landing. Um, and, and that would be it to, to get started. Mr. Chairman, I make a, a motion to continue this uh, public hearing to the next meeting for the uh, vessel landing permit to the Winnipesaukee Adventures for the Winnie V. Second, though. Motion's been made and seconded. And One question. This is not, as I recall, this is not a public hearing just for our discussion. Yep. Just change that to discussion, Brad. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Yep. Would it be appropriate to suggest that she come to uh, New Senegal in the interim with a draft to be sure that the, when she comes to the meeting I think Mr. has what you want on it? I think her, Mr. Owen can, and Ann can. Mr. Owen, and he can yep. get it to us. Yep. Right. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. We'll Thank you. Thank you for coming. When is the next so meeting? Long. Yes. Next week. weeks. The 19th of? July. July. Of July. Okay. The 19th of July. Your, your next meeting. That's a, and we're not having it. Oh, the, oh, the 19th of July, right. And can I just ask a question? Sure. Um, from what we've discussed, am I to assume that it is not okay for me to access any of the town docks? Or is that something that needs to be looked up? Well, you don't have so a permit. You don't. At this point, you don't have a permit you to say, land. Are you asking for now, or are you asking for after you get the landing permit to use the town docks to park at? That's, that's what I'm asking. I, I understand the landing permit. Sure. I understand that how the other boats are coming in and out. In terms of the town docks themselves, is that? There's no commercial vehicles allowed at the Wolfboro downtown town docks. Okay. And what about the... Um, the mailboat? 
the mail boat in those other areas, can I try to get a different one of those spaces? Or a mail how, how does uh, that work? Well, we granted the mail boat has a commercial vessel landing permit to, to be parked there. Yeah. Mail boat's sort of a separate situation because it has to has to be there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm just asking if there would ever be a possibility of that or should I just scratch that off my list? Well, for at, at present, you don't have a permit, and according to the uh, statute, it's, uh, or the ordinance, I should say, it says failure to comply with the requirements of commercial vessel landing uh, permit program will result in a fine to be imposed by the Board of Selectmen in an amount not to exceed $100 per unauthorized landing. So. I think your first your first step is to is to get the get all these things worked out on the landings, and then in the future, you know, you know, we can certainly look at it and talk about it. Uh, can you get under the bridge? No. Okay. I, I think that uh, what we should try to do now is to get everything together for you to get that landing permit at our July 19th meeting, and then you'll have that, and you can come in and out of our commercial docks and carry on your business as you would like and we'll we'll get the uh, we'll measure the area and make sure your sign will fit and then we'll move on from there okay thank you thank you do we have uh, old business uh, mr. chairman I think the uh, chair of the uh, Heritage Commission here is here to. Uh, she has some, some an item she wanted to bring up, I believe. It's very hard to hear. Sorry. Sorry. Um, hi. So um, I was asked to come speak to you about what it means to list a building on the state register. <laughs> and specifically in the instance of the freight house. Could you, could you state your names just so that all the people know? Sorry, Maggie Steer, sorry. Um, in the instance of the freight house yeah, to a building that the town owns yeah. but leases yeah, right now, um, do we want to get that on the state register? And I gather that you all would like to have that happen and I have volunteered to try to help make that happen and want to be sure you understand what it means and um, that you are comfortable with this process moving forward. So let me set the stage a little bit. The New Hampshire Division of Historical Resources administers the State Register of Historic Places program. And they list only individual buildings that are, to quote them, um, that properties are worthy of preservation and that listing will encourage protection of these significant places. Meaningful in the history, architecture, archaeology, traditions, or engineering of New Hampshire communities. Um, John Sims, bless his heart, in putting together an application for state funding had to prepare the paperwork required for listing on the state register. He's done the bulk of the work, including documenting it with photographs and narrative according to the State Division of Historical Resources requirements. There is only a little bit more work that needs to be done to actually get it listed to the state register. There are some edits that need to be made to the narrative, and a week from next Monday, I have an appointment to go in and talk with DHR and find out what those edits are. John has shared a Word document of the copy with me, so I think that's pretty straightforward. He's provided a CD with all the photographs on it, so I think that piece is done. And we need permission of the building's owner and that means you, to sign off and to agree that you would like to list the building to the state register. This 
according to statute, carries no restrictions or limitations on what you can do with the building or to the building. It um, is your property. You are free, according to statute, as I said, to make any changes to it that you wish. Um, many people are under the impression that either national register listing or state register listing means you can't tear the building down or you can't make alterations. This program is strictly honorary, but there are some benefits to it. Um, and let me just enumerate those. Besides the um, eligibility for grant funding from either the Land and Community Heritage Investment Program or the Moose Plate Program, you're probably familiar with that because Moose Plate funds help to restore the clock on this building. Um, you get the, you, you, you are eligible for these grant funds. Um, you may request um, consideration from certain building codes, life safety codes, ADA access, et cetera. It doesn't mean that you can ignore those statutes, but it means that you may be able to get some relief in the letter of the law. And the Division of Historical Resources in Concord is there to help and to be an advocate for the building and for its owner to protect the integrity of the building and balance that with the um, intent of the law. There is also an opportunity to um, educate the public and to use this as an example of good preservation. The, um, there is a plaque which can be purchased. It's brushed aluminum. It has the old man of the mountain on it. it costs fifty dollars, and the state designed it. I'll, I just brought this to share with you, um, and it just notes that the building is listed to the state register. It's not nearly as elegant as the national register bronze plaque, which is on this building, um, but it is very handsome, and I think that would go a long way toward gaining recognition for the effort that this community made and the investment they voted to make in saving that building and preserving the railroad heritage of downtown. So I'm happy to answer any other questions that you might have. Linda? No, I, I'm just wondering, do you would like a motion from us? That would be lovely. Um, I move that the, ta that the Board of Selectmen agree that the town sign the application uh, to place the freight uh, station building on the State Registry of Historic Places. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Motions have uh, been made and seconded. Any further discussion from the Board? Dave? Is there some special form that needs to be filled out? Not really, Dave. Um, that's the, the inventory form has already been done by John Sims okay. because he needed to get what's called a determination of eligibility before he could apply for his LCHIP grant, which went in on the third week in June. Um, so that's the form. And they've already looked at it and said, yes, this is going to be eligible. So now it's really just the formality of making sure the form meets all of their specifications and that you, as the owners of the building, grant your permission to have it be listed. So, so the motion, as part of our minutes, would suffice to take I, care of that? I believe so. I did not see an actual form when okay. I looked at the paperwork online, but when I go down to Concord next week, I'll make yeah. sure that there isn't a form, and I would assume that either the chair of the board mm -hmm. or the town manager well, maybe we that. should make it so that I'll add so the town manager can sign the form. Okay, that we, would be great. I'll go along with that. We, we just wanted to make sure that before we go ahead and have Maggie uh, do this and get that listed on the State Register of Historic Places that the Board of Selectmen was aware of it and approved of our doing that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Maggie. We have any other old business? Any other business? Town manager's report. Uh, yes, Hello? Mr. Chair. Uh, I have a number of things to report out this evening. I'll start with the news that um, 
uh, the Monday before this last, uh, we received the resignation of Dave O'Brien from the code enforcement officer position. Um, and it was effective that same, same day. Uh, and uh, we were fortuitous enough to uh, be able to uh, uh, convince Corey Ryder to come back uh, from the city of Dover to uh, reassume uh, the position of code enforcement officer uh, for the town. And he will be assuming those duties next Monday, July 10th. And I'm glad of that. <laughs> uh, secondly, um, uh, concerning the, uh, the Great Dane situation, uh, a few things. Uh, first of all, if you look at the uh, town website, there is now a, a link on the t uh, homepage which connects directly to the Humane Society of the United States, uh, uh, where you c people that are interested in making donations to support the rescue of these 84 uh, Great Danes, um, uh, that, uh, and they want to be assured that the money is going to go to that, not something else. This is a specific link to where they can make donations uh, to support that effort. The, the Humane Society says that they're anticipating that their costs are going to be uh, around $500,000 wow. uh, uh, for uh, the, this, this effort. They're going to have to uh, hold those dogs and, and uh, treat, treat them uh, uh, for medical uh, uh, conditions and such for several months. Uh, before they can be uh, made available for adoption. They're basically evidence at this time, so they have to be held until uh, the court cases are, are over. Uh, so um, that link is on, on the town website. Uh, secondly, uh, about that situation, uh, I provided the board in your packets a copy of the cost estimate for the cleanup of the Warren Sands Road property, as you noted, most likely it's 91 pages long and totals about $140,000 in total, uh, the cost. Uh, uh, to that, we added uh, some conditions for uh, town approval as a result of circulating uh, this proposed cleanup proposal to several town officials, including the health officer, the chief of police, the planning and zoning director, the conservation chair, and we also sent it to the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, uh, which set some uh, conditions of their own uh, for the cleanup. Uh, relative to the conditions that the town added uh, to this or the one, the removal and proper dis disposal of the piles of dog feces on the property. Secondly, the removal of all dog feces from the property, not just the piles, but all, all dog feces. Three, removal of all the trash and rubbish from the property. And four, pumping out the septic tank on the proper property and properly disposing of the septage. So um, uh, I was informed today by the manager for ServPro that they have agreed to all of those conditions and um, I, I don't know what result that has on the cost estimate. I'm sure it's gone up uh, as a result, but uh, they, they have agreed to all of those conditions. In addition to those uh, concerns, um, we also worked out an agreement for uh, testing the water quality uh, on the property, um, which I signed, was worked out between um, town council and council representing uh, Tina Fay. And it grants the town access uh, to the property to conduct the, uh, uh, the test. 
And uh, I signed for the town last Friday. Um, as of uh, late today, my understanding is that uh, attorney uh, Coles, is it, uh, representing uh, uh, Tina Fay is was still trying to get her signature, so we don't have a signed agreement yet, but it's in it's in process. So that's pretty much uh, the status report on those those items. I have one question. Um, I noted that there was no air quality testing. I thought there was a question of whether that should be done. Um, and no, that uh, wasn't raised. I read it somewhere in here when I was reading it. There was a question regarding the air quality, and that was one thing that wasn't that it would be good to do a air quality test beforehand and then another one afterwards. Um, okay, it says from the guy from uh, uh, Service Pro, I do not carry any cost for any surface or air sampling to be done at the home as I was not aware of state and uh, town and state hygiene. And then he goes on to say that um, it would be prudent uh, to have testing conducted to establish a baseline prior to starting work and then to approve the clearance testing upon completion of work. Mm. So we it was from the serve Pro guy? Yeah, to his Okay, letter. well neither the town nor DES raised uh, air quality testing as concerns, so we did not uh, included in our okay. I'm just I just was reading that from his, and I wonder okay. whether that's something. Um, well, maybe it's something he's going to do then. Well, I, when I read the proposal, there seemed to be a lot of areas that he didn't quote cost for because he just didn't know. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, if there's no other questions or comments on that, I'll go on to some other items. Um, a couple of meetings ago, the board voted to establish a scenic roads uh, and a, a rural and scenic roads uh, ad hoc committee. At, at this time, we've only received uh, three indications of interest uh, uh, for the committee. Um, I did receive an additional um, uh, indication from uh, Mr. Rossinger that he, he's going to uh, want to be on the committee and, and he's going to try to find a couple other people from uh, the North Wolfboro area to, that might be interested. So hopefully by your next meeting we'll have enough names to put forward uh, to you for your consideration for appointment to that, that ad, ad hoc committee. So I just wanted to let you know where that's at. Uh, we received a check today in the mail from Primex for $49,654.87. That's the insurance payout on that uh, collapsed building at the wastewater treatment plant. So the check has been received and deposited. Uh, the uh, Cemetery on Middleton Road that we've been trying to develop for some period of time. Uh, I think you'll notice some construction activity out there uh, maybe tomorrow and Friday. Uh, the Public Works Department is going to be putting in the water lines for the spigots and also the uh, gravel road uh, for the perimeter roadway. So uh, you'll see that activity <coughs> soon. Uh, we had an inquiry today for uh, uh, wanting to know if the knowing the territory books uh, for 2017 are available, and we checked, and they are. So we're ordering all board members' uh, books uh, for the current year. Uh, I also, I think I included in your um, packet a copy of an email we received from a Port Wedland Road resident who expressed her extreme satisfaction with the work that was done in her neighborhood. And I received another email, I, that I don't think I put it in your packet, from another resident who, who said uh, she had lived in uh, cities and towns all over the country and she had never seen a 
uh, recycling operation as efficient as ours was her comment. So I think that covers everything on, on my list here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, committee reports. Start down there with Brad. Okay. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we had a uh, Friends of Libby had a kind of a meeting, open house, and a reception for Alana Albee up at the uh, Libby Museums. Very nicely attended. Um, she spoke a little bit about uh, you know her mission up there and her goals, what she'd like to do, and the place looked very good too. It uh, done some rearranging in there. It looks nice inside. And also, uh, last Saturday, we attended the, uh, the open house, the, uh, the public safety building, the fire de department and the police department put on uh, some very nice demonstrations up there. It was, seemed to be very well received, too. There were a lot of people there that day, and good hamburgers and hot dogs, too. So mm -hmm. compliments to the chefs. <laughs> and one other thing, too, um, I, don't, I don't think it's come out yet, Dave, but I just got word from some of my uh, contacts at DOT they ended up with a surplus last year of about $32 million. And what their plan is to distribute that uh, extra money starting in the July payment would be their first quarter for 2018. Um, it's going to be added into the block grants that each town gets in the state. So we should be seeing a fairly large increase in the block grant check that we get for the our third quarter, their first quarter. We like that. So mm -hmm. I thought that was good <laughs> news, so I wanted to share it. <laughs> That's it for me. I also went to the police fire uh, open house. I agree, hamburgers and hot dogs are good. Um, also attended the parade, which I think most of us did. And other than that, I haven't been to any meetings other than it's been kind of fun again to fill in as a building inspector with Matt uh, pushing me around. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Only for another day. <laughs> I don't have any committee reports, but I also went to the open house, and I really enjoyed all the demonstrations. The fire department put on some demonstration. We saw a demonstration from the police dog Riggs, which was really uh, fun to watch. Um, I had many comments about how excellent the 4th of July parade was, and I have put on my iPad here a picture of the fireworks of last night that I attended. They were some of the best. Um, again, I, this is my brother-in-law who took this picture uh, going over a booster uh, building and um, hats off to the public, uh, I mean for the uh, park and rec department who put that on. It was an excellent show. It was, uh, and thank you to the police department. You guys did an amazing job yesterday getting all those cars in and out of town all day long. Uh, Everything went really smooth. People, I've heard, I heard numerous comments, and the docks were packed, and there, I mean, we, we had a lot of people in Wolfboro the last couple of days, so hats off to you guys for making it all happen, and DPW for getting all those cones out and all that stuff, and rerouting traffic, so that's, you know, that's what it's all about. It's our, it's our short period of time. There, and I think they're still here. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of people still There's in town. A lot of people there. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. I went to the open house also, and that was a great deal of fun. Also, I don't know if anybody mentioned it, but uh, some of us went to the Lakes Region dinner uh, last week, and that was a very nice event. Uh, also, um, David Sunman and I of Littleton Coin Company are giving a major grant to the New Hampshire Historical Society to uh, set up some position in digitizing uh, history including a, a banking history, and uh, and I would like them to work with the uh, Wolfboro Public Library, and I haven't talked to Cindy about this uh, completely, but uh, we'd like to give a grant, my wife and I, to the library. We've already m uh, given them donations of a, a library of New Hampshire uh, town histories, which is in boxes for, that, for the new building, and I, I feel that uh, the public library can uh, become a resource center a uh, first-class resource center for uh, digitizing photographs and things, maybe working in concert with the New Hampshire Historical Society, of which I'm a trustee. But uh, our library is leading edge in that it's growing, it's uh, dynamic, uh, and it's well-staffed, and uh, 
that's just something that we're th it's in the thinking stage. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Beeler, any questions from the press? Make a motion we go into non-public. We have pu public input first. Does anyone from the public here want to speak? Okay. statement. Okay. <laughs> it's a motion. All, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome.